hey guys, off call, I finally made their announcement about how GCSE and A-level grades are going to be decided this year. So I'm going to go over everything in this video, there is lots of documentation out there. Um, and if you've got a specific question, the best thing to do is look at the pinned comment um, and then jump to that timestamp because we are going to be covering um, the process, um, the appeals process, retakes, we're going to be covering private candidates, spoken assessments for English and foreign languages, practical endorsements for the A-level sciences, um, any coursework or non-exam assessment as they called it, but it's basically coursework whether you finished it or not, um, whether your schools need to sit you extra work to do it, um, whether it's going to be based on target grades or predicted grades, um, how this is going to affect G10 students, how this is going to affect um, international students, how this is going to affect AS students, what qualifications it's going to affect, um, is there going to be a results day, what you can do to influence your teachers, the appeals process, the standardisation process and then the resits process. So your grades are going to be centre assessment grades and teachers are going to be used to ask to be used a holistic professional judgment. Now teachers do this all the time, we are good at doing this, we are actually fairly good at working out what grades you're going to get but not everyone is going to have a lot of experience with this and not everyone is going to be perfect at this and not everyone is going to be right at this. So teachers are going to be asked to look at a range of data, that's going to include um, your book work, any like end of topic tests that you've done, any mock results that you've done, any coursework that you've done. For practical subjects like PE and drama, any performances that you've done can be taken into account. The tier that you were due to be entered for, so if you're sitting a foundation tier on a paper you cannot suddenly be given a 9 for this. And if you are doing A levels and you've already done your AS exams then they're going to be taking the AS results into account as well. If you haven't had a teacher for whatever reason or you've had a cover teacher or you've had a lot of changes in teachers the person who's going to be looking at your grades is probably going to be the head of department. Now I know in science and in maths and in languages there are shortages of teachers so there are going to be students in circumstances where you maybe haven't had a solid teacher the whole way through. The person who's going to be in charge of doing this is probably going to be your head of department. And then after teachers have decided what grade you are going to get, whether it is GCSE or whether it is A level, they are going to have to rank you within that grade. So whether it's a grade 5 for GCSE Maths, they're going to have to rank everyone who got the grade or they gave a grade 5 to a GCSE Maths, or whether it's a B at A level, they're going to have to take all those students in that um, grade bracket and rank them from, I'm definitely very, very sure this person would have got this grade, definitely very, very sure, all the way down to, yeah, this person probably would have got this grade on a really good day if they'd done lots and lots of revision. So you're kind of like the most secure they were thinking about to the least secure they were thinking about. And the ranking is what the exam boards are going to use as part of their standardisation. Now, this ranking of subjects is going to be okay for smaller subjects, uh, maybe where there's one class with one or two teachers. So things like drama or foreign languages and A-level where, you know, potentially the teacher teachers have known the students for a very long time, they've done lots and lots of assessments with them. Um, it, it's not going to be too much trouble for those teachers. We are going to see a lot of problems for teachers when it comes to things like a core subject like GCSE Maths in a very large school where you might have a large number of different teachers um, teaching them, where not one single teacher has taught and assessed every single student. Some teachers are going to judge um, harsher, some teachers are going to judge nicer. And then a group of teachers, the head of a department, has to combine all of those jobs and as a centre, submit a rank for students. So it's not a rank within a class, it's a rank across a whole centre. Now that could be a school, that could be a school spread across a couple of different sites. Um, this is going to be a nightmare for teachers. And my one plea to you out of all of this is... Please do not try and influence your teachers in any way. Um, I want you to remember that your teachers are human beings and they are facing a, I don't want to say an impossible task because it is possible they are going to have to do it, but it's a horrible task. It is a really, really unfair thing to ask teachers to do this and it's really, really unfair on you that your grades are being given this way. But this is the way that it is now and complaining to your teachers, harassing your teachers saying if you don't give me this grade I'm going to do this is not going to work because 
Um, the exam boards are going to standardise results, so if they see that all of a sudden everyone in a centre is expected to get a 9, that's not actually going to happen. So if you harass your teachers and pressure them into giving you a higher grade, well first of all you're going to really annoy them at a really really stressful time and chances are it's not going to work. And then secondly, if they do give you a higher grade but then um, the results get standardised, that could drag everyone in the centre down because when they do the standardisation they're going to be looking at things like expected results for the centre, expected results for the cohorts and this is going to be based on your key stage 2 and your SATs data. They can pretty much predict what the pattern of the graph is going to look like and it is going to be a similar pattern to other years. A 4 given in the 2020 exams is going to be worth as much as a 4 given in the 2019 exams and hopefully the 2021 exams are going to take place but at the moment really who knows. So the pattern is going to follow um, other exams, it's going to follow kind of like what they expect the, the school performance to be and then it's going to be based on teacher judgments. When they do the standardisation they won't change the ranking of students within that centre. So they're not going to go and look at that data and say oh I think this person probably would have done this person because there are thousands of you, hundreds of thousands of students in this position. They are not going to be fiddling around with the ranking of the data but what they might do is shift the curves from individual schools, from individual colleges, from individual centres a little bit so it matches the, the pattern nationally so that it matches the expected data for the schools. We can assume that the distribution of grades is going to look the same as the as other years and we know and we expect that some schools are going to grade more generously and some schools are going to grade more harshly and to balance out the generousness and the harshness of other schools there is going to be standardisation, there is going to be more moderation there's going to be shifting around of these grades now exam boards could shift whole cohorts up or down or they could just shift like the bottom part of grade four up or down depending on exactly what the data looks like but you are not going to know what grade your teacher has given you schools teachers have been told to not release this data and there's even been um, an exemption from GDPR where you can request your data that schools are not going to be releasing this data to you until after if you request it after the exams have actually come out. There is no point knowing what the schools have given you because if the exam board decides to moderate it, decides to change it, well it could be a completely different grade anyway. Any year 10 students who are supposed to sit exams this year, um, now I know some schools are kind of like the GCSE maths in year 10 and GCSE statistics in year 11, or some schools do GCSE biology in year 10 and GCSE chemistry and physics in year 11. If you are a year 10 student who is supposed to sit at GCSE this year, centres have been told to withdraw you and to not give you a grade. Now this isn't the final judgment on this because of course I've still said they're taking advice on this but at the moment you will not be getting a grade and you'll be expected to sit your exams at the end of year 11. Spoken assessments for English, uh, for other language and practical assessments for AS are going to be treated the same as exam assessments. So you'll be given your teacher's best judgment on the grade. You will not be expected to sit any of these assessments. There is no requirement for the schools to give you an extra mock exam or to make you send in evidence or to make you send in work. That is not what the exam boards are looking for. So if you have been sent extra work at um, home and for whatever reason due to a personal circumstances at home, you can't complete it, you will not be disadvantaged because of this. Private candidates can still be included in assessment, um, in teacher assessment judgments, but the head of the centre, whether that's the, kind of the exams officer or the head teacher or whoever has been designated the head of the centre, has to sign off that they are confident that private candidate will have got this grade as much as any other candidate in that centre. Now this is a legal requirement and somebody fraudulently filling this in could get into a lot of trouble. So if you have a personal relationship with the people at the exam centre, say you're kind of like, you know, resitting something or it's kind of like a tuition centre, then chances are you're going to get your grade. 
if you do not have a personal relationship with this centre and you are just going to turn up on the day and sit the exam and the teachers do not know you and you cannot get a professional judgement for your grade then I'm afraid chances are you're going to be sitting the exam in the autumn. Now there will be autumn exams but the normal appeals process is not going to apply because the normal appeals process results are changed based on remarking of exams but there are no exams. The only, in my opinion, the only um, reason for an appeal would be if a teacher incorrectly submitted information. Now I don't see a lot of cases of this happen and in most cases it is going to be resitting um, the exams, basically the whole course in September. So these decisions apply to GCSEs, AS and A levels. The extended project qualification is covered. So even if you haven't done your final presentation, um, even if you haven't submitted your final report and had that marked, then teachers will still use that assessment and it applies to the advanced extension award in maths. And this covers all of the exam boards. It covers AQA, it covers Edexcel, it covers ACR, it covers WGEC, um, EDUCAS, it covers the ASDAN and it covers City and Guilds. So it does cover international students. If you are an international student and um, uh, sitting there IGCSEs or international A-levels with Pearson, then this is how your exam results are going to be decided for this year. So the one grade you are not going to get is not purely going to be based on your target grades because your target grades are generally set a little bit higher to motivate you. It is not purely going to be your predicted grades and it is not purely going to be your working at grades. Teachers are going to be using a holistic overall judgment of how they think you would have done. So you cannot look at your bit of paper and say this is my predicted grade, this is definitely what my teacher is going to be giving me because you might be um, expected to get a little bit above or a little bit below that. So this is really, really tricky times, guys. I'm going to be back. I'm going to do a little question and answer for you later, um, assuming I'm not exhausted from editing. But um, please try and be kind to each other. Please try and be kind to your teachers. This is a horrible, horrible task for your teachers. They have poured their heart and their soul into teaching you for years and um, this is not how they wanted the year to end for you so if you are going to be emailing your teachers please do not harass them about your grades please do not threaten them please don't get your teachers your parents to do that just send them an email and check that they're okay and say thank you miss for teaching me I'm really gonna miss you because that is how your teachers feel about you they miss you they want to be in school teaching you 